Hey everybody, I'm Karen Rogers and this is Anthony. Can you say hi everybody? Hi everybody. <laughs> Anthony and I are here at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. What are we celebrating? Daisy Days. Daisy Days. Daisy Days here. Everybody's having a good time, so stick around to see how CHOP is changing lives every day. Right, Anthony? Yeah. Hi. Every summer, daisies bloom. Each flower a symbol of new life but the daisies come a little early around Philadelphia, spreading a similar message, hope. Miracles happen here every day. The Children's Hospital of Philadelphia has been celebrating Daisy Days for 60 years. Every year it grows, budding with kindness and compassion. For many years now, this has been a community endeavor. The impact can be felt in a survivor's ambitions. I just wanted to help people in the same way that I was helped. The effects can be seen in an athlete's courage to get back on the track. It can be heard in a fan's happiness when he meets his heroes. Man, two stars right here. Hope is in bloom as 6ABC and the Children's Hospital Philadelphia celebrate Daisy Days. Welcome to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. We're in the Colquhead Atrium where the patients and families are celebrating Daisy Days. We've got arts and crafts, we're painting over here. It's just lots of family fun to help kick off the month-long campaign here at CHOP that runs through May. Its impact has been felt for more than half a century inside these hospital walls and throughout the CHOP community. I'll meet patients and families out there in the community and they'll say, I'd love to get involved with CHOP. I'd love to figure out a way to give back. Well, here's the way to do it. The Daisy Days campaign is celebrating 60 years of charity. This is an important program that's had an impact uh, for a long time. It spread positive energy throughout the hospital. Daisy Days is a way for our patients to get involved. I just came to see how the daisy decorating is coming. Whether it's creating decorative daisies or being a model for the day and walking the runway, the month of May is an opportunity to interact with family, friends, and other patients. For many years now, this has been a community endeavor. Anyone can participate to do something that you know can make an impact on the life of a child. That impact would not be possible without events like this. Many people are not aware that the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia is a nonprofit organization. Daisy Days is one of many fundraisers that has helped CHOP remain one of the most innovative hospitals in the world. We are an international destination. People from all over the country and all over the world come here to seek care, but we're also a charity. The money raised directly supports programs like their child life services. There's something on your head. We have a number of different things that we do with children that are not typically funded by medical insurance, which includes art therapy, music therapy, pet therapy. It also supports the innovative treatments that has made CHOP a revolutionary research facility. I feel very fortunate to making as huge an impact, both on the local community here in Philadelphia, as well as on the global uh, community of pediatric patients. They are credited with the invention of closed incubators, the balloon catheter, vaccines for rubella and rotavirus, common practices that have changed medical procedure in the past and potentially in the future. On the verge of developing gene therapy that will be applicable to patients with hemophilia. Miracles happen here every day. Even though I've been here for a long time, I walk away in awe of the work that they do and the commitment they have. Are you ready to go home? The Children's Hospital of Philadelphia is the oldest children's hospital in the United States. It remains a leader in medicine, thanks to a community of supporters that grows larger each May through Daisy Days. Hello, friends. Hey <laughs> it's very meaningful and very satisfying. The impact uh, is evident. We can have a sense of pride in contributing to this larger mission of the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Children will always keep you on your toes and keep you smiling. That sort of unifying feeling and spirit and the mission that we have here at CHOP. The mission here at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia is to be a world leader in pediatric medicine. There are so many kids around this country and around the world who just don't have access to the kinds of innovative treatments developed here. And the doctors here say they're trying to bridge that gap. And they can do that thanks to programs like this, Daisy Days, which makes CHOP a safe haven for families who desperately want to help their kids. Kids like Tori Lee. Come on, Tori. Tori Lee is your typical 12-year-old. When you get to high school, do you think you'll still do throwing or you want to try some running and jumping events? 
She excels in sixth grade, likes spending time with her friends, and throws shot put for her school's track team, which is coached by her mom. I don't know, they're just really fun, and a lot of my friends do them. She's a healthy 12-year-old playing with her friends. It wasn't always that way. When she was just five years old, she was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And we were told standard care, easy, 95% cure. For Tori, that was easier said than done. Cancer kept coming back and it kept coming back and every time it came back it was a little uglier than the last time. The Lee family spent the next seven years in and out of hospitals with Tori trying to combat the disease. I didn't really know what was happening. Um, it's pretty scary. You, you know, you start thinking down deep, ugly paths of, of where we're going with cancer. Why our child? She didn't do anything wrong. It, it was brutal. So they turned to CHOP. Well, leukemia had come back a couple times and she was at very high risk of uh, eventually dying of her disease and her, her parents were looking for another way to treat her. Dr. Grupp felt Tori was the ideal candidate for immunotherapy, a brand new treatment developed at the University of Pennsylvania and the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. So we're taking cells of the immune system, cells that are called T cells, we take them out of the patient we basically genetically engineer them so that they can recognize cancer cells. This groundbreaking procedure convinced Tori and her family to make the two-hour journey from their North Jersey home to CHOP countless times for the treatment. We thank God for the immunotherapy. Immunotherapy was developed by Dr. Grupp, and since its inception in 2010, 93% of patients receiving the treatment went into remission, allowing kids like Tori to lead a normal life. For a group of patients that really had no hope at all, those are hopeful numbers. Since the treatment, Tori has been cancer-free for three years. Thanks to CHOP, everything's normal. She's a normal child with no side effects from chemotherapy anymore. That's a beautiful thing. Now they only make the two-hour trek every six months for routine checkups and haven't had an extended hospital stay since they started the immunotherapy treatment. We have not spent a single night in a hospital since feels pretty good. It's better. I get to go to school and hang out with my friends and do sports and other activities. Tori and her family are finally getting the chance to live a normal life nearly seven years after the first diagnosis. She's on the track team. She's doing great in school. She's just got the concerns of a normal kid her age and, and it's not about her disease anymore. I mostly go to the beach and I have a pool in my backyard so we hang out there a lot. It was just a normal day. It was, can I have my friends come over? How long can they stay? Can I go outside and play? You know, those were the questions my wife and I were, were answering, and, and that felt really good. Isn't it great to see Tori back out there and having fun, and best of all, feeling healthy? There's more to come here as we continue to share these amazing stories. Welcome back to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. We're celebrating the 60th annual Daisy Days campaign. You can see all the festivities happening around here. Lots of painting going on. It's a child life event for patients here. This is a chance to get out, to interact with each other, and with the families. And that's an important mission here at CHOP. Wait till you are a koala bear and lobster all in one. CHOP's Child Life program is one of the largest in the country. It's an innovative program created back in 1951 it has grown to be a standard bearer in the industry, helping children cope with their diagnosis and their time in the hospital. The hospital environment for kids can be really threatening and it's a change in their routine. So the goal of our role is really to make sure that kids have an overall good experience in the hospital and that they're learning about their illness while also feeling comfortable and enjoying their time here. One of the ways they do that is with therapeutic play. They learn and they experience their environment and explore their environment through play. So to provide them with those opportunities helps to them to become more familiar with an unfamiliar medical environment. You sure I look good in these glasses? Yes. <laughs> You're not lying, right? No. <laughs> Philanthropic events like Daisy Days make it possible for programs like this to thrive and grow. Fundraisers such as this provide us with the materials that we need to provide all of these wonderful services to our patients and families. Do you want a mustache or a mouth? And then we'll go like this. A big hallmark is family-centered care, and we play a big role in helping to support not only parents and caregivers, but also all of the siblings of the patients who are here in the hospital. 
Each Daisy Days campaign supports a specific department in the hospital. This year's beneficiary is the oncology department. The oncology department takes care of uh, children, adolescents, and young adults with all forms of cancer. We get patients from all 50 states and many countries throughout the world. You're the prettiest zebra I ever did see. Proceeds from the event will be used to help support all facets of the department. From training the next generation of doctors to our uh, survivorship program that helps take care of patients after they're cured. Daisy Days is instrumental in developing groundbreaking treatment and therapeutic care with the ultimate goal of curing cancer in every patient. A child might have an 85% chance of being cured, that's great but it doesn't mean too much to the parents of the 15% who aren't cured. And so our goal is to work toward the day where everybody can be cured. Do you have ladybugs on your arm? Whoa, that's nice. Events like this remind the entire CHOP team that they came here with a mission. Everybody who works here has chosen to spend their lives working with children. There's something very unifying about that. While the CHOP staff is instrumental in the healing process, the true stars shine brightest on days like this. Best day ever, that's pretty good, right? They really have a resilience that is awe-inspiring, and as I say, they're way tougher than I am. Kids want to be kids and they want to play, and we see that just at this event today, how many kids are here and having a good time despite what's happening. And I want you to meet the Nunez family. We've got Maria and Jose, and most importantly, we've got Anthony, right? Hey, Anthony, how old are you? Four. Four years old, you're such a big boy. Are you hiding from me over there? <laughs> Anthony is recovering from Ewing sarcoma. How you feeling today, little guy? You doing okay? Yeah. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. I bet they were having fun painting, all of you out here yeah. and coloring. Yeah, yeah, we sure was. Yeah, I know this <laughs> is hard on the family so much when you're dealing with a child who's got an illness and coming here to chop. How are you holding up? We're holding up really good. You are? Yes. Good, I'm like glad a, to hear that. A community and a family and they really gave us support. Mm -hmm. And they're doing that out here today. This is one of the child life events. And I know in addition to the painting and coloring you see, they actually come into the rooms. They do so much to help. How did that kind of affect your treatment. It made it better for him. It mm -hmm. kind of like made a calm for him with the storm that was his treatment. Right. So it just made the days go by a little faster for him and treatment, you know, go a little better. For him. Yeah, and that's all you want when you've yes. got a little guy in the hospital. You just want it to go better any way yeah. it can, right? Yes. yes all right. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Anthony, high five on you. I hope you continue right. to feel good. <laughs> good job, buddy. And I saw him painting over there just a little bit on his shirt. Overall, very good. <laughs> we want you to stick around. There's plenty more to come on our Daisy Day special. Welcome back to 6ABC's celebration of Daisy Days. The impact this hospital has is really difficult to put into numbers. The kids cured here have countless accomplishments, achievements that just may not have been possible without the treatment they received here. And they say this hospital offers hope. And one young lady who has spent much of her childhood as a patient is now ready to pay it forward. How can you prove that? Felicia Bandos is two weeks away from graduation at LaSalle University with a degree in biology. How do you feel about it? I feel okay. <laughs> you know, a lot of people are scared, but I'm ready to I'm ready to move on. And move past a childhood battle with cancer that lasted a decade, leaving scars that will never heal. But those scars, her family, and one hospital have shaped Felicia's future. The tumor was the size of a softball, so I was immediately rushed to CHOP. At just six years old, Felicia was diagnosed with Wilms tumor, a kidney cancer that primarily affects children. I had extreme just abdominal pain, and my mom was like, no, there's something just not right. So this was certainly not a fairly straightforward tumor. An initial surgery successfully removed the tumor. She was treated with chemotherapy and radiation, but the long road ahead had just begun. I was going through routine CAT scans. They caught the bottom part of my lungs and they saw spots in my right side. I thought we dealt with this. Right, right. and this should be yeah. done, and here we are yeah. once again. 
Felicia's treatment continued, multiple surgeries to remove recurring spots on her lungs, months of radiation and chemo to fight the spread of the disease, but it never cracked Felicia's spirit. My mom would be like, all right, Felicia, you have to have another surgery, and be like, okay. It, it, did, it, did, it didn't even phase me, I hardly cried. You're so yeah, tiny, but it's like you're made of steel <laughs> or something. And Felicia never gave up her activities. She was swimming a swim meet the day after she got done a week's worth of chemo. You're kidding. I went to school from 8 to 12, and then my mom, I would take me down to shop, I would get my chemo, and then I would go home, get out the next day and go to school again. Felicia lived her life. She just got chemo in between. She took dance class and played basketball. Her family did their best to make things normal. One treatment at a time, one surgery at a time. That's what we just did, and we fed off her. As you see, she's amazing. She's just a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> After years of treatment, doctors used a final surgery to fight off the disease. So they took out the whole bottom load of my right lung, and then I did radiation and chemo again. And finally, the Bandos family got a break. She was diagnosed in 2000 and declared cured in 2010. It's Ten a long years. Time. Felicia continued with regular checkups at CHOP, even though she was cured. What is very critical is to continue to have follow-up with physicians who actually have expertise in the area of survivorship. Thanks to the continued treatment, doctors were able to find another occurrence of cancer, this time in Felicia's thyroid. So it was like it came back four different times. It was most likely from the radiation that I had. The cancer was a likely side effect of her initial treatment. It was her sophomore year at LaSalle University. Is this going to be a significant disruption of the life that I have finally built for myself? This was something that she was fairly anxious about. But nothing would slow down Felicia. She obviously has a very positive outlook, which I think everyone recognizes. Another surgery to remove her thyroid, and Felicia never skipped a beat. I think your positive attitude probably really helped with I that. I agree with that. I agree with that. Now she's fully healthy, soon to have her degree from LaSalle in biology, her goal to work in the medical field. How do you think all of this shaped you? I'm the only person in my whole family to ever pick science. You're the only person I ever met that said, well, I'm really into blood. I know, exactly. <laughs> I did not think this day was going to come. I couldn't be more proud of her. Felicia will always be a cancer survivor, and she plans to pay it forward. I just want to be there for someone who's going through the same thing that I did and say like, look, I'm here now. Look how far I made it in life. If I can do this, so can you. I seriously love Felicia. Isn't she great? Her story really inspired me and I, I posted her story on the Facebook page and so many of you out there sent messages of hope and gratitude to Felicia and she said she and her family were really touched by that. And Felicia will graduate from LaSalle on May 22nd and get this, she's throwing a graduation party and she's not asking for gifts, she's asking for donations to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Talk about an amazing young lady. This year, the Daisy Days campaign is adding a new way to get involved. It's called the 31 Day Challenge, a month-long effort to raise money. And this year, you can support the cause and get fit at the same time. We are challenging individuals to walk, run, or jog 31, 62, or 100 miles throughout the month of May. It's easy to sign up for the challenge on the CHOP Daisy Days website. Register, choose your challenge, and then share your fundraising efforts to help raise money and awareness for the Daisy Days campaign. You can build support for CHOP by connecting your fundraising page to your community. And then the last step is you just get active and start moving. Even a quick jog on your lunch break adds to your monthly miles. You can track your progress using any fitness app and pick the pace that works for you. Anyone can participate. That's the beauty of the 31 Day Challenge. It's completely up to you. The 31 Day Challenge is a great way to get involved in Daisy Days. There's still time to join and reach your goals during this month of May. Having goals is an important part of the healing process here at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. It might help explain the case of James Sadowski, who was diagnosed with lymphoma in November, but now this high school junior is back to his old self, a high energy character and a lifelong Eagles fan with the goal of one day becoming a sports broadcaster. Welcome to the James Sadowski Show and we're talking Eagles football. It all comes very naturally to James Sadowski. 
right here. Boom, pinpoint. Kid's got hands too. Whether it's breaking down his favorite sport or meeting his favorite players. I mean, you're Jason Kelsey, man. Ooh. What's up, James? Vinnie Curry, man. Oh, oh man. man, two stars right here. How you doing, man? Yeah, I just love people. That's how I am. His upbeat approach to life is something he gets from his mom, Laurie. This is life. Participate in life, love people, talk to people. That's how you learn. Hey, Cody Parkin. I know who he is. Kicker. We have a special guest, so I want to say hi. His optimistic outlook was a blessing when James was diagnosed with lymphoma in November. I kind of just said, well, it is what it is. It was out of my control. And, you know, all I can do is keep positive and, you know, make the most of a bad situation. It was a life-changing diagnosis for the high school junior. It was a mass and it was pressing on my heart valves. The plan was to go through four months of chemotherapy. I went through six rounds of it. I cared for him, I laughed with him, I cried on my own, not in front of him because James did not want to see me cry. James spent weeks at CHOP for treatment, but his enthusiasm never wavered. They call me the mayor. Kind of tried making other kids who were put in the situation, give them hope, help them cope. After four months of rigorous treatment, James was declared cancer-free in March. They killed this thing off and you know, now I'm in remission, I'm starting the whole healing process which I'm doing pretty darn well with. He's just been a true inspiration to everybody. I'm so proud of him. As part of the healing process, James was invited to tour the Philadelphia Eagles practice facility. Hello, How's it going? How you doing, what's your name? I'm James. James, nice to meet yeah. you. Yeah, dude's huge. I've been an Eagles fan my whole life. Always wanted to meet him and to get this opportunity, you know, it was a dream come true. He tested the mic in the team meeting room. The Philadelphia Eagles select the one and only James Sadowski. Woo! He visited the weight room. Picture this punching bag as the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Mwah, 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 mwah. And he walked on the practice field. Touchdown, Eagles! It's a privilege to be able to meet these guys and talk with them. You know, it's a blessing, to be quite honest. Hey! Uh, what's up, you, brother? Nice to see you. What's going on? Nice to see you too. You have Great. A good day, man? James met his heroes. Big man on campus. Each offering a handshake and some kind words. What's up, guy? Hey, how you doing? Good, Jordan Hicks, man. Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you, too. Have fun. Yo, thank you. Have a good one. Jordan Hicks! What's going on, brother? Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. You look good, man. Like you're beefing up. That's you right. <laughs> his favorite player, Jordan Matthews, not only signed as Bob, but hooked up with him on social media. Snapchat? Oh, yeah. That's, we can do that, too. Woo! He uh, wants me to get out to a game sometime. The home opener against the Cleveland Browns. With my boy. Great seeing you again. Thank you, thank you. Don't be a stranger, man. Chris Maragos took him inside the player's sanctuary. Let's go, come on. No cameras allowed because everyone knows what happens in the locker room. Stays in the locker room. <laughs> James's future is looking bright. And now, you know, I get to live my life, we'll eventually go to college, have a family, and you know, just live life. He's scheduled to graduate next year from high school. After that, he'll pursue a lifelong passion to be a broadcaster. Top goal is to get on SportsCenter, anything to get my hands on, including sports, would be phenomenal and a dream come true. And along the way, James's biggest fan will be providing the play-by-play. -play. James has a lot of courage, and I am so proud of him. He is my hero. I'm so excited to see James on TV someday. Isn't he going to be great? And we want to thank the Eagles. They were so nice to volunteer and take him on that big tour. And believe me, the staff here from the Eagles, they're in full force. They're here, they're painting, they're volunteering and coloring and desperately trying to keep up with the kids. And we want to thank James and Felicia and Tori and all the patients and doctors who took the time to share their stories with us tonight. And they want you to know that Daisy Days is just one of the ways to make the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia your charity of choice. Stay tuned to 6ABC throughout the month of May. We'll be celebrating all month long, and if you'd like to get involved, visit chopdaisydays.org for more information to find out how you can make an impact. I'm Karen Rogers. Thanks for joining us.